Hey, welcome back to the Technical Institute. Today we're going to be talking about Flow. Flow is an integrated drain down system. It's meant to help clear any stagnant water out of your lines. So let's say you're traveling uh, for a couple days and you don't want that water to stay inside your lines. Flow can help get any of that stagnant water out. It can also assist with the winterization process. Now there's two different types of flow. There's the 12 volt system that we have here and the 120 volt system that's also available. The only real big difference there is how they're getting their power. So obviously the 12 volt system needs a 12 volt power supply and it does come with a 12 volt plug adapter or it can be hardwired right into the coach wire. The other option is the 120 volt option which would be wired right into a, or plugged right into a 120 volt outlet. Other than that, installation is the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and let's get open, let's get this box open rather, and see what's inside. So the first thing here is just a little plastic cover. We'll get that out of our way. Right here we have the 12 volt compressor for flow. This harness right here is that 12 volt harness. If it was the 120 volt flow, it would have a standard three prong plug. Over here, this little black outlet right here, this hose, that is for the air to be able to pump through your water supply system. Underneath flow, we have this 12 volt adapter. This 12 volt adapter can hook right into flow and then you can plug it into any 12 volt plug. Underneath this piece of paper here, we have our installation instructions. We also have this flow rag. This is just meant to help clean up any spills you have during installation. The next part we're gonna look at here is our T-fitting. That T-fitting right here is a very specific design. The airline, the one coming off flow right here, will hook right into the top of here. There's another valve that we'll see during installation and I'll pull it out of the box here in a second. <clears throat> this longer portion of the T here needs to face the tank, needs to face where your fresh water is getting pulled out of, all right? This section over here, the smaller section, that would face towards your other faucets or your fixtures. The reason for that is inside of here, this is your primary valve. This helps prevent backflow of air. So if you're pushing air through, it won't back flow into your tank. And if you're pushing water through, water won't pour and go into flow. So it's very important that this is installed in the correct manner. So from your tank into here, and then this guy will connect to your outlets or faucets. We'll get a better picture of that during the installation process. Next, we have a bag full of various types of uh, screws, hose clamps, and some other fittings that you'll need to utilize during the installation process. Underneath that, we have our 13 feet of wire to be able to extend the installation of flow and be able to connect it to our 12 volt adapter plug here. So we'll be able to extend and make up to 13 feet of wiring depending on where we need to install flow inside our coach. After that, the last part inside the box is our secondary valve. Now your secondary valve would actually get connected right here on flow. And what that does is if for whatever reason your primary valve were to fail, this secondary valve is gonna act as a safety for you. All right, so that will need to be installed as well. Again, you get a very good picture of that during the installation process. And lastly, underneath this plastic container, we have our 13 feet of air compressor hose. So this would be able to extend the air compressor line with 13 feet inside your coach, and then you have another 13 feet of wiring to be able to wire it up as well. So that's everything that comes inside the box for flow, and this will get you set up inside your coach and be able to help you finish that installation process. All right, so we're gonna mount our flow right by the tank here. You don't have to mount it right next to the tank, but it's gonna kind of illustrate installation a little bit easier if we do it close to our tank here. 
So the first step here is we need to mount this to a firm location. We're going to do it to the floor. I could do it to this back wall, but again, just easier to see everything if we have it sort of out in the open here. So the first step here is we're going to take four of our anti-vibration washers and then four of these white cap retainers and then four Phillips screws and we're just going to go ahead and attach the flow to the floor. So now the anti-vibration washers, those are going to go underneath flow just like that. Then we'll go ahead and slide our cap, this clear cap retainer. We'll install those caps here in a minute. So the hole in it, we just slide that through the screw, or slide the screw through that rather. Then we'll take our screw. Wherever you're mounting this, you wanna make sure you're not gonna hit any wires or anything along those lines, obviously. We just tighten that guy down to the floor. Make sure you don't spread that white cap out too much. Otherwise, it may not retain the cap uh, that we're going to put on it here in a little bit. So you want to make sure you don't spread it out too far or damage it. Install our second anti-vibration washer. Now, if you're installing flow, I'd recommend doing it in an easy place that's easy to reach, easy to access. Underneath the bunk may not be the best idea. That just happens to be where ours is going to be in this coach. Once you have the two front ones installed, you go ahead and install the two back ones. We'll get to those two back ones here in just a second, but I want to show you these black caps. These black caps just snap in place like a button, just snap in place over the screw here. So we'll do these two front ones and then we'll finish out the back ones here. All right, the next step here is to install the secondary valve. Now the secondary valve here has this blue handle on top of it. This T-fitting has a one-way valve already built into it right here inside the neck. <clears throat> so um, the secondary valve is just a safety if this primary valve inside the T fitting here were to fail. So for installation on this guy, currently it's in the on position. So just like any other valve, the handle faces the direction of flow. To turn it in the off position, you would just turn it so that the handle is perpendicular to the travel of flow. But we want it in the on position. That way we get airflow from the flow through our system itself. Easily installed, you just go ahead and take the opening here and you slide it right over that black hose. And then right now it's installed. If you determine you do want it installed just like you see here so that the handle sort of acts as an arrow and it's pointing back at flow. If you do accidentally install it backwards, it's not that big of a deal. These do have collars. You simply press on these collars right here, and that'll release this fitting from the hose. So now we push it in place there, and that is the installation of our secondary safety valve. So we actually went ahead and modified our plumbing just a little bit, because depending on your coach will dictate the type of installation you need to perform. Before we cut into any hose though and did our modification, we did run the, uh, the faucets, make sure we got all the water out of there. We did disconnected our city line. But now what we need to do is we need to adapt this clear line to our T-fitting right here. Now there is some modification you need to do to this hose. That guy won't fit right in there. With PEX, if you have PEX inside your coach, this connection is pretty straightforward. You just pop that PEX line right in there. But we'll focus on the clearer line. We'll get to that PEX line here in a moment. <clears throat> to modify this, you have these barbed connections here. These will allow this clear hose to connect properly to your T-fitting. Easy enough for it to install these. 
slip your clamp ring over the hose. And we'll go ahead and we'll install this barbed fitting into the end of the hose right here. Now, if you haven't done this before, a hair dryer or a heat gun to kind of warm up the end of this hose will make getting this barbed fitting in there a lot easier. All right, so if you've never done this before, use a hair dryer or a heat gun and these barbed fittings will slide in there a lot easier, right? So we'll go ahead and just slide those guys in there. Once they're sat down in there, we'll go ahead and move that clamp ring forward. Now you might have to loosen it up a little bit to get it to fit over that properly. And once you have that clamp ring sat properly over those barbed, that barbed fitting, so I'm going for about halfway. And we'll just tighten and clamp that guy down. That way we have a firm, solid connection there. Next, we'll go ahead and insert our T-fitting on to the clear hose portion. Now, if you're using clear hose on both ends, you have to install that barbed fitting on each section of hose. All right. Now, before you install this T-fitting, there is a very specific way. Like I mentioned, this is your primary shutoff. So what this does is down inside this portion of your T-fitting, there's your primary valve that will allow either water or air to come through your system. The longer portion of this T-fitting needs to be facing or connected to the hose that is connected to your reservoir. All right, that is a key important thing to remember. So the longer portion of the T, the hose that's coming out of your reservoir, those two need the mesh, just like that. Just set it right in place. Now, if you determine later, oh, you know, maybe you put this T-fitting on backwards, it's easy to get off. There's these little collars that pop. You can pop this guy right off and spin it around, all right? Now, that would be the incorrect way to install ours, so I'll go ahead and fix that real quick, but that's that easy, all right? So if you make a mistake, you're not, you know, stuck. You can easily rectify that. So again, if you have a clear hose in your coach, you're going to do those barbed fittings on both sides. If you have pecs, super easy. Take your pecs. Be careful not to bend it at a 90 degree angle. You want to kind of get a good slope into it. So something gradual like you see here. And we're just going to go ahead and pop that right in the end of that T-fitting. And that would complete this portion of plumbing. Now, one thing to remember is flow should be right after your reservoir and before your pump. So you want reservoir, flow, then pump. If you have a filtration system, you would want flow before the filtration system. You do not want flow after your pump, otherwise the purpose of flow, to help get some of that stagnant water out of the system, you lose all of that right here at your pump, right? So you won't get any of this stuff before the pump if you put flow after. So very important, reservoir, take it in for flow, and then up to your pump or up to your filtration system, then into your pump, whatever the case may be inside your coach. Like I mentioned, your coach may have the clear hose or may have this PEX hose, either one. We've just seen both installations. You can tell that they're fairly easy. All right, next, now that we got our plumbing situated properly, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our air hose and we're gonna connect, excuse me, we're gonna connect our primary valve to our secondary valve. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you don't have to have flow mounted where we're doing ours here. This is just to illustrate sort of where you want flow in line with your reservoir and your pump. So what we'll do is we'll take some shears, we'll cut this air supply hose, and we'll mount it, we'll connect it with this T-fitting down to our secondary shutoff valve. Now when you're connecting this hose, you don't want to cut it so short that when you connect these two, your valve has undue lateral pressure on it. So you don't want to, you don't want to connect your hose and then have this fitting being pulled one way or the other. So I've cut off a little bit extra, but that's just so we're not putting too much 
pressure on anything. And simply, just like we did with the water lines, press fit those in. And if you determine it's too much, you can pop this out, take your shears in here again, modify that cut, and shorten it up if you'd like. All right, but again, don't make it so short so you're pulling on this valve. All right, the next process here is to get, so we have power coming to our wire right here. So we have 13 feet of wire right here. We're simply going to take the male end, plug it into the female end, and then we can route this rest of this wire anywhere inside the coach that we need to get it to. You have a couple options when it comes to wiring. We can take and add in this 12 volt adapter so you can plug it into any you know car lighter that you might have or we can not use this let's say you just don't simply want to use that what we can do is we can either hardwire this right into the battery the fused line here so the line that has the fuse in it that is your power wire so that's your 12 volt positive this wire right here that has no fuse on it that's your ground wire so we can cut these wires off, strip them, and connect them right to the battery. Or, let's say you don't want to come down here and operate flow, the switch is on the back here. Let's say you want to have this switch installed in a more convenient, maybe in a cupboard or closer to the battery where this guy's going to get hooked up. We can install this switch on this wire, put it on your positive side, so we can pop off the face of it here. We can install this switch by crimping on our positive wire onto these two terminals on the top of the bottom here. Put that cover back on. And then we leave flow on at flow and then we turn this switch on or off so that we can operate flow from a more convenient location. All right, so you've got a few wiring options. You can cut these, go straight to the battery and then come, at, come to flow and turn it off or on. You can use this switch so that you leave flow on on the unit itself and then you flip this switch on and off to operate flow or if you have a 12 volt adapter that will this will fit in then you can connect these two wires together and plug this into that adapter any of those are going to work for you as long as you remember that the wires with the fuse in them that's your positive wire so we want to make sure that this fuse However, we're, wherever we're putting this wire, make sure it's on the positive side of things. This other wire is your ground wire, the wire without the fuse. Any one of those options that work best in the situation in your coach will be just fine. All right, so we've moved over to another unit so you can get a, another full picture of installation or what it might look like for you. We've got flow over here. This is that 120 volt system. So dimensions are exactly the same as the 12 volt system that we did the install on. Down here, we've got our T valve. That's our primary valve to help prevent any backflow of water up into flow or air down into our holding tank. You can see I've got that long neck portion facing towards our holding tank, just like we did in the installation video. Other than that, We've got our pump up here to the left and then the rest of our plumbing after that. So again, just like that installation video, we've got the holding tank, then we've got flow, and then we have our pump. Next, before we start any operation of flow, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set our water heater here so that it's in bypass, just like you would if you were going to use antifreeze. Then we're going to go ahead and drain our holding tanks and our water heater. Then we're gonna make sure we close those dump valves. Then what we can do is open up our faucets and drain those out, and then we wanna make sure we close those handles and close those valves as well. At this point, we can do sinks, shower, anything along those lines, but we wanna wait to do the toilets until very last. After that, we can go ahead and come down here to our secondary secondary valve right here, and we can go ahead and open that up. 
So now that when we turn flow on, we've got positive airflow from flow up into our water line here. At that point, we could turn flow on and start pressurizing the system. Now, what we want to do first is clear out our holding tank lines first. And then once we're done with that, we'll switch over to our city supply side and then we'll clear that out at the very end. So first is holding tanks and then it's city supply side. All right, we've got our flow valve set to the on position. The first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna turn on both the hot and cold valves at all of our faucets, showers, all that stuff. We're gonna let all that water run out best we can. Once it's finished, or relatively close, we're gonna shut those valves again, and then we're gonna turn on flow. Now, when we turn on flow, it's gonna build up to 15 PSI and then shut down. We need to make sure that the valves are all closed, otherwise the air is just gonna pull uh, through our faucet here, and the system will never build up the appropriate pressure. Once it builds up to 15 PSI, then we'll sh it'll shut itself down. We'll open the valve back up one at a time at each outlet. And then once we open that valve, the pressure in flow will drop and it'll automatically turn itself back on and then turn itself back off. The first setup here should only take about 30 to 45 seconds. If it takes longer than 90 seconds, you wanna check the troubleshooting section of the flow manual. Before we turn flow on, we've already gone through and turned both on, both our valves here on at every outlet in the RV. The next step is we're gonna turn flow on and it's gonna build up 15 pounds of pressure and that should take 30 to 45 seconds. If it takes up to 90 seconds or longer, we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and turn flow off and then reference the troubleshooting section of the manual that was supplied with flow. So first things first, we'll go ahead and start flow. Now that flow has built up the 15 PSI in the system, the next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna open up one valve. We don't wanna open up both. We're gonna start over here to the right. Once I open this, flow is gonna kick back on. It'll start to build up pressure back up in the system <clears throat> until it gets to 15 PSI again. But before we do this, we're gonna let as much water drain out of this as it wants. Once flow kicks back on, that air pressure coming through the system is gonna help push out that water as well. So we're gonna let that go until, you know, next to no water is coming out, and then we'll shut that valve, then flow will run, run for about 30 more seconds to build up to that 15 PSI, and then we'll go ahead and open up this valve, and then we just continue that process throughout the coach until everything from our tanks, uh, or that's supplied by our tank, has been basically evacuated from the system. And then we can switch over to our city supply side and continue that process. That way we're ensuring that all that stagnant water or all that water that's potentially able to turn stagnant is out of our lines. So let's go ahead and open up our valve. All right, 
open the valve you can see that it pushed out some water at first it was a little bit of a steady stream but then it really started to spurt out there so we can see that flow helped push out a lot of excess water that was still remaining in our lines the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up the left hand valve here we're going to evacuate that water from that portion of the system flow is going to kick back on just like you saw and then we'll continue on through the rest of the valves inside our coach our installation and operation of the flow system. Now the big things to keep in mind and remember before you go ahead and order one, you've either got the 636, that's the 12 volt version that we installed on the unit behind us, or you've got the 868 version which is the 120 volt system. The only difference between those two systems is whether it's 120 volt or 12 volts. So before you decide to go ahead and purchase one, you're gonna to want to decide which one's gonna be easiest for you to install. So you're gonna be close to an outlet, you can go with the 120 volt version. Are you gonna be close to a 12 volt source? Then the 636 model may suit you best. There's no difference in functionality between the two models, just where you're gonna get that power supply from. Now, if you have any other questions in regards to flow or any of our other products, you can contact our customer care center at 574-537-8900 or you can shoot them an email at customer service at lci1.com or you can go on our website that's lci1.com we've got a chat feature down in the lower right hand corner that you can click on and chat with one of our phone technicians or the manuals and videos for this product are located on the website with many other products as well Thanks for joining us again today, and we look forward to seeing y'all in the future.